So this is the first TRX50 motherboard that I have tested or used or actually touched on this channel. This is from ASUS and this is the Pro WS TRX50 Sage Wi-Fi. So let's take a look what this motherboard is about and uh, what's in the box. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10 but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Here we have the motherboard, put that on the side. Okay, we have the manual, that's empty on that side. And there is this. Interestingly, this one doesn't include the um, ASUS M.2 expansion card, that one over there. In terms of cables, we have a temperature prone. We have a CPU 8 pin to PCIe 8 pin power cable. And there's two of these inside. CPU and then goes to PCIe. That's interesting. So we've got the front panel header, we've got a Wi-Fi antenna, some uh, plastic standoffs for the M.2s and spare quick clutch ones and some SATA cables. So here's the motherboard then. And it's a lot different than what we usually see. There's a bit of like overclocking stuff going on, a bit of service stuff going on. So one thing that we see straight away is that we have like this pro or built for pros design. We see heat sinks here for our chipset and for our VRM. So this has actually a 36 power stages um, for this here. And I can see a big, heat um, heat pipe that goes underneath there all the way in here for the heat sink there's fans on both sides that blow on it so there's two he uh, heat pipes they kind of split in the middle there and they go underneath from here all the way down to cool all of these power stages up which is very very interesting uh, let's get the quick main things out of the way first so there's four dim slots and these are R dim slots which means that you can't just put any normal like what do you call it? mainstream uh, DDR5 in here? You need a special R dim for that, and that's what it goes here because they work a little bit differently, even the voltage is differently, and the notch is in a in a different place. So if we take this Kingston Fury R dim for example, this is XPG, then you can see that they're in a in a different place on both sides. The notch is slightly in a different place. And this won't go in there, no matter which way we're gonna put it, it won't go in. You need like an R dim. So I've got this Kingston Fury Renegade Pro here, but also this motherboard, because it's a sample for the media, they sent me some uh, G Skill R dims. And they are 6400 megatransfers per second. So you can't actually go wrong because the notch is in a different place, but just so you know, when you're getting the Threadripper Pro system, or at least this one here, you're gonna have to get RDIMMs uh, for this motherboard. Then we have the new socket for the Ryzen 7000 Threadripper, or Threadripper, Ryzen Threadripper 7000. Uh, this is what they use. This is the SB6, SAM SB6 socket. And then we can open it as well. So you can see what's inside. Boom. Here's our socket. Boom, how many thousand pins in there? Absolutely insane. This time they're in like four sectors. But let's keep looking. So one of the other things that you straight away see different on this motherboard is uh, there's a bit more like power headers for your power supply. So here on the top, we have some CPU headers. So actually the left side is a CPU 12 volt and the right side is a PCIe CPU 12 volt. So that's why you would have those um, converters plugs in there on the different one. So interestingly, you can convert this PCIe cable. So basically we can put the PCIe 8 pin in here and then we put the CPU inside here. So if you've got a secondary power supply, you can put the CPU header inside this one. I guess they've tried to like separate it so that you're not going to put um, the two CPU headers inside here so you have like two separate kind of uh, power supplies but in the wrong slots so that when you want to plug in the secondary one you're going to have to use these extension cables that make the cpu power into pcie well it's the same power but just like different headers so they kind of move them around a little bit let's keep going with the power cable so here is the secondary cpu power header 
as you can see. So this is the 8-pin EPS power cable. And if you have one power supply, you need to plug in this one and that one. So they're like separate cables there. Then we have the main ATX power supply here, 24-pin. But then the secondary power supply you want to plug in here. So right now there's actual like plugs in here, so you won't plug it into the wrong slot. In here, and then two CPU headers. So this is PCIe CPU, which means that you'll use you know, these two headers to make this PCIe header actually into a CPU header where you put the CPUs in. And why would you need a secondary power supply? Well, there's a few reasons for that. One, if you don't have enough connectors, for example, for your, you know, GPUs, let's say you have multiple GPUs that require the 12 volt high power cable, 600 watts. And because now on the Threadripper platform, we have loads of PCI lanes. So a lot of people might run multiple GPUs and you don't have enough, then you can connect your secondary power supply here as well through the ATX, because when you plug the ATX in here as well, when you turn the PC on through the power put, boom, it will actually wake both of the power supplies together and then you can run like more cable options for your you know gpus or pci powers or whatever but also secondly if you're doing like heavy overclocking as a creator i don't think this is what you should be doing but then you have four headers for your actual cpu so four 8-pin PCIe connectors where you can put a lot more power for your CPU. We also have two more um, power headers over here. These gray ones here, 6-pin and 8-pin PCIe headers. So basically you need to plug these in as well. So this is where your you know, 6-pin and 8-pin PCIe headers come in. And they provide some extra power for these PCIe slots in other places. Okay, a few additions to the power supply and where to plug things in when you have single, multiple, or high power draw system. So here's what you do. So firstly, I've got this in here. And um, if you've got a single power supply, then that's correct. You just use these if you're not using high power system, something like that. So that's all good. But now if you've got a high power demand system and you still got a single uh, system, then what you'd have to do is you actually have to use those cables that I showed you in that cable. And then you're gonna plug in one in here, okay? Then you're gonna connect a power in there, in there, in there, and in there. So basically you've got four CPU connectors, two of them PCIe, and, de and depending which power supply you're gonna be using, uh, you might have to use those extension cables or not. And also you have to plug in these as well. Just remember that when you're using GPUs. So leave that one, basically don't plug anything in there if you have a single power supply. Now, if you've got dual power supply, they recommend also to have um, same power supply for both of them, then it gets a little bit complicated. So the red one is power supply one, okay? You're gonna have to plug in power supply one in there, then in there, and then in there. And then the secondary power supply will use these headers in here, okay? So that's two and that's one. So moving on to the fan headers. On the top there, you can see a CPU header and CPU optional header there for the fans. Then on here, we have the water pump header. Then moving on, we have two more headers here, chassis fan, another chassis fan, and then one more in the bottom there, as well as one hiding just up there for your CPU or chassis or whatever, the back fan. There's another header just down there. Next, what we see are some front panel headers. So here we have the USB-C front panel header, and this is the USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 slot, uh, 20 gigabits in speed, as you can see here, USB-C. Then we have USB type A here, or 3.0 for the front panel, which is five gigabits in second. And we have actually two more USB 2.0 headers on the bottom here. Moving on, we see some SATA cables here. There's one, two, three, four SATA ports in here, as well as a slim SAS port, which is very interesting. So kind of a server um, grade port here, if you want to extend your storage or whatever. Very interesting port here, very fast port as well. We have the front panel headers in here. Then we have some sensors and testers here for overclocking and all sorts of things. BMC header, we have a safe boot here, boom, and a retry button in here, boom. Then we've got two more switches here. One of them is VRM test here, which is off right now and you can put it on. So these are overclocking modes here. And then a slow mode here as well 
that you can have a switch there. Also on the top there, there's a little jumper header, which means that if you're going for liquid cooled or liquid nitrogen, you should use that header there to like say, okay, it's going to use slightly differently in some of the temperatures and uh, slow boots and every new whole uh, overclocking uh, header there. We have a USB 4 header, which is very interesting. I haven't seen that one yet and how or where do they use it, whether it's an expansion card that you can put in there or like a front panel header. Interesting as well. Com header, Dr. Debug here or Q code. There we have a flex key here, which means that you can configure it to do a few different things. Um, and the BIOS but extra button start button there and front panel audio. Moving on, there is a little TPM header in there as well. So that covers pretty much the headers. Let's take a look underneath the heat sinks of this motherboard then. So when we take that little heat sink off here, we can see one in there. And then looks like this is PCIe Gen 4 slot M.2 in there. Now, I don't have a block diagram on this um, motherboard, neither does ASUS right now, but um, I don't think you're gonna lose any bandwidth or any switching in here because um, this platform has a lot of um, PCIe lanes. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay, let's take the secondary uh, heatsink off. Well, that is a big block of leather. And interestingly, what we can see here is two heatsinks on the top and actually some on the bottom as well. But the bottom is just literally like to the motherboard, so it will be cool down there. Interestingly, this is the M.2 1, this is M.2 2, and this is the third one here. So the third one will be PCIe 4.0, and I can see little options here that these are PCIe 5.0 and 5.0 X4 slots, so you can get PCIe Gen 5 speed, absolutely insane, and not lose anything. We can see that there's a little more heat sinks of the power stages in there for the power, and then a little one here for the chipset. So looking like the chipset isn't doing a ton here so not a ton of things go through the chipset i think everything is just directly connected to the cpu so we get three m.2 slots which is good as a creator i'd like to see more especially on a threadripper platform uh, we could easily add more here the last thing to check out on this motherboard is the io so what we see in the back here starting from the top we have a clear cmos button boom and then a bios flashback button also we see another usb c port in the back of here which is another 20 gigabit port, so USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. Uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth headers, this does have Wi-Fi. Well, I was about to say 6E, but actually it is 7. Wi-Fi 7, as you can see in there, and Bluetooth 5.4. So it's not 6E, but Wi-Fi 7, which is absolutely amazing, because if you knew how fast Wi-Fi 7 is, go check out my video on the ASRock motherboard. It is very, very fast, and um, now, wirelessly, you can connect to your NAS extremely fast. Then we have some 10 gigabit USB ports, which are all of these blue ones, as you can see here. 10 gigabit Type A, 10 gigabit Type A, 10 gigabit, so six of these. And then we have two USB 2.0 headers in here. 10 gigabit LAN and one 2.5 gigabit LAN, as well as optical out, line out, and mic in ports in here. I wish there was more Type-C ports in the back because more and more devices use Type-C. Even if it's just 10 gigabit, I'd love to see one more, like two more 10 gigabits in there and leave like some of these um, Type A headers and give me Type-C. Now, when we're looking at the back side of the motherboard, there is no protection, no ports. Usually these boards, if you remember the WRX80 motherboards, they have like a cover all the way in the back. So you can't shave off any of these tiny little SMDs or anything like that. So that's a little bit of a downside, but I think this is like a little bit cheaper as well than some of the pro motherboards. But at this price point, I'd still expect a little bit of a back cover there. Another interesting thing is this is just above the ATX size. So ATX motherboards like end somewhere here. So it's only a tiny little bit bigger. Some of the uh, mainstream motherboards are even bigger that go even further out. So that's that. Also, if you buy this motherboard, you're gonna get three months for free Adobe Creative Cloud membership, which makes this uh, motherboard very interesting for creators and makes it a little bit more affordable if you're already using Adobe, but now you get just three months for free where you don't have to pay for it. So I think it's pretty interesting. Um, it says built for pros, but there is a lot of overclocking features here as well, which kind of to me is like, 
why you know this is for pros i don't think pros would do overclocking with this board because trx50 is kind of like a you know high-end desktop platform and i think asus is gonna probably do some um, you know maximus hero boards or something like that for the w uh, trx50 uh, but for here overclocking features here they're a little bit of a waste of uh, time and money for us who are just creators and want maybe just loads of usb connectivity and a lot of power cables and so on it's it's just interesting now another thing i do want to mention here which can be a little bit um annoying is that i think these the spacing of these um is slightly off i think the first and this one we should have moved it down one more because if you put a massive rtx 1490 in here we're going to lose the ability to connect something in there but if you want to put in like 24080s or something like that from the pro ad then i guess they will maybe fit just over here because this is just over two slots thick but i think that should have been one slot down and then we see like we get a full slot in here and then another one in here if you wanted to or something like that right now this is kind of a waste in there in terms of pci expansion slots and what's going on here's what's happening so firstly this top slot is PCA Gen 5 X16 slot. The second slot here is also PCA Gen 5 X16 slot. Now, it's, to me, it's still weird that they space like this. This GPU slot should be in here because then you can actually put two GPUs in there, you know. Right now, it's slightly difficult. You might have to use some kind of a riser cable because whatever Gen 4 X16 card that you have high-end there, like whether 4080 or above, even 4070s, you're not going to be able to use this one there. Then we've got this one here, which is also PCA Gen 5, but this is X8 slot. So pins somewhere only around there. Then we've got this slot here, which is PCA Gen 4 X4 slot. As you can see, pins only in there. But the interesting thing is, if you do use ASUS's USB 4 expansion card, which I can't find anywhere, but apparently you can use this header here. If you remember that USB 4 header, then you should connect it up over there and then we've got this last slot over here which is pca gen 4 x16 slot which is actually very very nice that they've done that on the bottom slot because if you do have a case that has an opening on the bottom for example fantex has some of them or some of these other cases that, that doesn't have a power supply shroud in there. You can put a full GPU in there that actually just slots further down and you can actually get all the bandwidth of this one. Or another way how you can utilize this bottom slot is the uh, ASUS M.2 expander card because then you can slot the card in there, which is only one slot card, only would take like about that much space. And then you can put four more M.2 SSDs in there and then that is all connected to the CPU as well. Regarding the block diagram and what's connected to the CPU, most of the things on this motherboard are connected to CPU. The only things that are connected through the chipset, and by the way, the chipset is connected to the CPU by four PCIe Gen 4 lanes. Um, there's the front panel type C that's connected to there. We've got the type A and then the SATA port, as well as the Slim SAS port, they are connected to the chipset, as well as the USB 2.0 headers in here, they're connected to the chipset as well, and the PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slot, and then two USB headers in the back, 10 gigabit ports, the Type A ones, they're also connected from there to the chipset. But all of these expansion slots, or even a lot of the headers and LAN ports and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, all of these things directly connected to the CPU, which is absolutely amazing. And what we don't see in the non-Threadripper platforms. I think some of them at least are definitely PCA Gen 5. I believe all of them are because why not? Because the you know CPU supports it. So that's that. If you want to check it out and the build that I'm going to do it, subscribe. But also I'll leave the link for this in the description below if you want to check it out. I'd love to know your comments or your thoughts on this in the comments below. I'll meet you down there. And if you didn't know, I'm going to build guides for every single budget for a creator. If you want to build this over create a PC, then check out them in the description below. There's every budget available, whichever one your budget is. If this seems a little bit more expensive for you, or you like some kind of product in my channel, like a review of a case or a GPU or something like that, then just mix and match them all together. But the best bank for work, the link in the description below. Go check them out. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll meet you in the comment section below. Bye-bye.